On behalf of the University of Strathclyde, I welcome you all here today for our congregation for the conferment of degrees. This is the, the Barony Hall. It's a, a Gothic-style building in the, the east end of Glasgow. It's got some fantastic, if you look around, some, some fantastic examples of stained glass windows. And we're very special to our left to have the, the UK's only Bach-style organ in existence. And the, the sound it comes from it is truly, truly stupendous. This is a, a very special day. It's a, it's a day for you, our, our graduates. You've gone through quite a hard time, I can say, uh, over the last few years with the, the pandemic restrictions. And you've got through it. You've developed your, your personality. You've developed perseverance. You've got lots of experience now in working remotely. Uh, and you're here and you succeeded. But it's also a special day for those who traveled with you. Those of you who are your family, your friends, your loved ones, your colleagues, who supported you during that time. I know myself, my daughter was graduated just last year and she went through the exact same things that you went through. And I went through the exact same things as the parents and the families went through to, to see you through this, this journey. It's a special day for our staff. In a very short period, in a, say a week, within a week, once the pandemic restrictions fell down, our staff had to completely transform the way in which they taught, the way they delivered their programs. And he did it in a week in order for us to give you the best educational experience that you can have our staff worked almost nearly 24 hours a day in order to get a whole program, a suite of programs for thousands of students moving from face-to-face -face delivery to an online delivery. And then you remember that we've had periods where we were allowed back and then we weren't allowed back. And our staff really went through significant challenges. And they're here today en masse to celebrate your success. Now, if that wasn't special enough, we have two fellows of the university in attendance. We've got Baroness Goldie, and we've also got Do Dr. Archie Hunter, who have joined us for today's celebration. And we also have an honorary graduate, Benny Higgins. Benny will be presented with an honorary degree later, and we'll look forward to hearing everything about him. But I think that Benny is, is someone who I, I know very well and is a, a dear friend. And he's someone that has come from what you call, a, a, you call an underprivileged background and, and being successful, very successful. And that's what Strathclyde really is all about. That's our DNA. We want everyone to achieve the very best they can be. And I think Benny is a great exemplar of that. So without further ado, I now declare today's Congregation for the Conferment of Degrees open, and I ask Professor Eleanor Shaw, Associate Principal of the University, to present our honorary graduate. Executive Dean, I have the honor to present to you Benny Higgins. Graduates, friends, families and colleagues, I'm delighted to introduce you to Benny. Today we are celebrating the class of 2022. This is your day. Many congratulations to you and your families. You've earned your degree and the right to stand proud as a graduate of the University of Strathclyde. You now join a strong family of over 198,000 alumni. And as you take the next steps into your personal developments and your careers, you can put to good use all of the useful learning you have acquired here at Strathclyde. You can put that into practice economically, socially, and most importantly, to averting the most significant challenge we face 
And I know that there are many right now, but I am, of course, talking about the global climate emergency. As a leading international technological university, inspired by its founding mission to make a positive difference to the lives of its students, to society and to the world, the University of Strathclyde rightly acknowledges the outstanding contributions which others sharing this vision have made to Scottish society. Recipients of this award are inspirational individuals and role models for Strathclyde students, alumni, staff and the wider community. This is particularly true in the case of today's recipient, Benny Higgins. Today, we recognise the outstanding contributions which Benny has made to Scotland and the UK's financial services industry and his tremendous impact on and support for Scotland's cultural and social landscape. Benny is joined today by his wife Sharon and some of his close friends. I'm pleased to warmly welcome you all and I hope you really have a super day. Benny hails from a part of Glasgow, Tory Glen, that is designated an SIMD 0 to 40 area. This means that the Scottish Government consider the area to be in most need of economic and social support. Despite the hurdles Jerry had to face as a child, Benny had to face as a child, he excelled at school and he fulfilled an early dream of captaining the youth team of Glasgow Celtic Football Club. Although we believe that Strathclyde was his first choice, Benny graduated from the University of Glasgow with a first class degree in mathematics and continued his sporting success. He was awarded a University Blue for his sporting achievements and talents. Benny began his career at Standard Life in 1983 as an actuarial graduate. Impressively, by 1996, he was appointed as a member of the Standard Life execu Group Executive. In 1997, he moved to join the Royal Bank of Scotland to take up the post of Chief Executive of Retail Banking. In this role, he led the bank's successful integration with NatWest Retail Banking, one of the largest measures ever undertaken in UK banking history. He left RBS in 2006 to join HBOS PLC as their Executive Officer of Retail before being appointed as Chief Executive Officer of Tesco Bank in 2008. Many of you will recall this was a challenging and critical time for global financial markets. Despite taking on this senior position at that, during that particular financial crisis, under Benny's leadership, Tesco Bank grew to become one of the most established new banks in the UK, serving more than 6 million customers and employing 4,000 people in Edinburgh, Glasgow and Newcastle. Outside of financial services, Benny has and continues to hold numerous senior roles through which he gives back to and supports the economic and cultural fabric of Scotland. Significantly, in recognition of his services to the financial sector, in 2018, he was appointed a strategic advisor to the Scottish Government on the building of the Scottish National Investment Bank. And recognising the breadth of his business experience, he was also appointed as chair of the Scottish Government's advisory group on economic recovery post-COVID-19, during which he consulted widely and provided many recommendations to the Scottish Government on how our economy could recover from the global pandemic. Not least, the emphasis he placed on the role of education was very impactful. Benny is currently Chief Executive of the McClure Group, Non-Executive Chair of Marker Study Group, and Chair of the National Galleries of Scotland. He is also Chair of Systema Scotland, a children's orchestra charity for those living in disadvantaged areas. Now, as if that didn't keep him busy enough, Benny is also Chair of 
Forster Chase Advisory, the Fine Arts Society and Edinburgh Fringe Society. He is also a trustee of Borough Renaissance. These are only a few of his appointments. Benny is a talented and busy person who gives so much back to so many parts of Scotland. Recognising this, Benny holds a number of fellowships, including the Faculty of Actuaries, Chartered Institute of Bankers in Scotland, and the Royal Society of Edinburgh. He also holds an honorary doctorate from the University of Glasgow. He also is a visiting and honorary professor at several institutions, including, I'm delighted to say, Strathclyde Business School. Over his career, Benny has displayed ambition, boldness, and innovation, important values which are shared by the University of Strathclyde, and values which today's class of 2022 are encouraged to embrace and to demonstrate throughout your careers. Throughout his career, Benny has shown empathy, compassion, and humility, important characteristics of any leader and never more needed given the turbulent times through which we are living. These values are also close to Strathclyde and I commend them to you all today. Apart from his wife Sharon and his dog Vito, Benny's real love is art, literature and poetry. Benny approaches life through these and it is this bringing together of the business and the cultural that makes Benny such a special asset for Scotland and the UK. Given this, it is perhaps, perhaps appropriate and fitting to end with a quote from Maya Angelou, one of Benny's favourite po poets and a major influence on his life. She said, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. This, above all, is Benny. It is with great pleasure, therefore, Executive Dean, that with the authority of Senate, I ask you to confer upon Benny Higgins the degree of Doctor of Business Administration. Benny, I am absolutely delighted to create you Doctor of Business Administration and Norris Couser. Congratulations. <laughs> Well, thank you first, uh, Professor Shaw, for your very gracious and generous uh, oration. It is most appreciated. I am, of course, very proud to be here receiving an honorary degree from this magnificent university, Strathclyde University. As Professor Shaw said, I grew up in Glasgow, and even though I've lived the majority of my life elsewhere, <clears throat> I have traveled both physically and emotionally, with the indelible mark of being a Glaswegian. Moreover, three of my children graduated from Strathclyde, as did Sharon, my wife, who also did a postgraduate degree here under the Carnegie Scholarship. It is a source of even further joy to be surrounded by my friends today. But I stand before you in the final phases of my professional career, Albeit, I do hope that over the next period, I can make a further defining contribution to what's possible. But today is about you as graduates at the beginning of your professional life. It's about you and your proud families and proud friends. I would like to share with you some reflections that I think I'd like you to consider. First of all, it is with great resonance that I say that formal education is priceless, it is invaluable. But there is so much more to acquiring knowledge. When I turned 25 and I qualified as an actuary back in the day in Standard Life, the finance director, Ian Lumsden, took me to one side and said, if you think you're smart, you are in danger of falling into a trap where you think you can solve everything. But actually there are occasions when the only way you can solve an issue is to lean on experience 
and he was getting at the importance of lived experience. The great politician and polymath Benjamin Franklin said, tell me and I'll forget, teach me and I'll learn, involve me and I'll understand. One of the greatest comedians, if not the greatest in Scotland's history, Billy Conley, has established a whole career through the acute observation of real life situations and of the human condition. It is very important as you live your lives that when things happen to you from which you could learn, don't let that moment pass. Don't let it go unnoticed. And that is very often the case when you suffer defeat. Defeat is the most challenging thing to tackle. One of my great heroes, uh, Nelson Mandela, said, judge me not by my success. Judge me by how often I fall down and get back up again. I also implore you today to develop an intellectual hinterland. Hinterland is, of course, a German word which means the area inland from a port. It first appeared in the English language when it was used by a geographer, Ch uh, George Chisholm, when he wrote a handbook on commercial geography in 1888. But it entered modern parlance in the 70s and 80s when Edna Healy, who was the wife of a famous Labour Chancellor, Dennis Healy, used it to criticise uh, Margaret Thatcher for her lack of interest beyond her day job in politics. And it's very important that you do take every opportunity to have such a hinterland, especially in the arts. Great art has the capacity to reinvent your way of appreciating the human condition. My great-grandfather, as in my great paternal grandfather, Big Tony as he was called, urged me to read as often as possible. And through that, I was able to experience much more vicariously than one can in a single life. It, it enables you to understand the importance of cognitive diversity. But if I may say a few words on leadership, all of you will become leaders, the leaders of tomorrow. You will be leaders whether you're working on your own as a leader of, uh, in, in terms of thought leadership, or you may be a leader in a small business with a small number of people, or you may lead a very large business where many lives depend upon you. And there are two very important pillars in leadership of a personal nature, I think. The first is authenticity. The best you can be is the best you can be as yourself. Oscar Wilde famously said, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. <laughs> and it's really important that you understand that trust is the glue that binds us together as a society or in any relationships. And that authenticity is the bedrock of that trust. The second area is self-respect and humility. There's a wonderful essay written in 1961 in Vogue magazine by the celebrated, celebrated writer Joan Didion. It's called Self-Respect, Its Source, Its Power. And she talks about the importance of both these things which are very closely related. Humility in particular must not be confused with modesty. Humility is the understanding of the limits of your own capability and experience and a, awareness of how other strengths can be complementary. And that strikes at the heart of what is so important in leadership. Harry S. Truman said once, if we do not, if we can accomplish so much if we do not mind who gets the credit. There are a few other short things I would mention in leadership. One is be ambitious. Secondly, be aware that uh, you must never let what matters most be at the mercy of what matters least. You must make sure that you do not think that you can talk your way out of things that you have behaved your way into. I lost a great mentor this year, Sir Angus Grossart, who was 85. For 25 years, Angus had given me advice and support. A few months before he died, he sent me a last piece of advice, and it was in the form of a quotation by S. Scott Fitzgerald. And I leave you with those words. For what it's worth, it's never too late, or in my case, too early, to be whoever you want to be. There is no time limit. You can stop whenever you want. You can change or stay the same. There are no rules to this thing. You can make the best of it or the worst of it. I hope you make the best of it. And I hope that you see things that startle you. I hope you feel things you have never felt before. 
I hope you meet people with a different point of view. I hope you live a life you're proud of. And if you find you don't, I hope you show the courage to start all over again. Thank you. this point in our, our celebration now where we cap the graduands, the Strathclyde, we approach the, these graduation ceremonies like they're uh, approached in other parts of the world as commencement ceremonies. We don't look on this as the end of your journey at Strathclyde. We don't look on this as an ending. We look on this as a beginning, a commencement. I'm moving from being a, a, a student with us to being an alum, to being someone who is proud to be a Strathclyder and will make Strathclyde proud through your actions. A lot of you have come here from all parts of the world and please, it's not often we get these graduations and at Strathclyde uh, we talk about we do, we like to do the, the formal informally. So please, when your loved one comes up onto the stage, celebrate with them. It's just one minute in time, but it'll be a minute that you'll remember for the rest of your life. Okay, so without further ado, I now ask Professor Susan Howick to come and present our graduates. Executive Dean, in the name of the University and by the authority of Senate, I present to you these students. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, Anud Redha Abbas. <laughs> Patrick Adarjan. Nicola Livingston Aitken. <laughs> Oguzan Aksoy. <laughs> Mahmoud Saad El Abri. <laughs> Feza Amur Al Basadi. Wafa Salim Al Hajri. <laughs> Sultan Abdullah Al Hatmi. <laughs> Rehab Yasin Al Lawati. <laughs> Nabil Hamid Zaran Al Maruki. Zara Yakub Yusuf Kamal A. Aziz Al Anasari. <laughs> Badr Mohammed Al Harbi. <laughs> Ibrahim Juma Al Sadi. <laughs> Heather Elizabeth. Thompson Anderson. <laughs> Prashant Arya. <laughs> Eric Quadro Asair. <laughs> Ashish Kumar. Salem Mohammed Bahakim. <laughs> Farhana Rashid Baksh. <laughs> Ewan Duncan Benon.
Koistab Bala. Prerna Barati. Ramya Bavaraju. Badran Bukamal. Jet Catherine Cameron. Demetrius Chrysanthakopoulos. <laughs> Wanji Chow. <laughs> Matthew Coy. <laughs> David Craig. Stephanie McMahon Stewart Craig, <laughs> Hatem Damak, <laughs> Fahad Danish, <laughs> Matthew Dorman. Scott Downey. <laughs> Ali Mohammed Abdelhamid El Feki. <laughs> Donald Essen. <laughs> Ross Finlayson. Stephen Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Connor Forbes. <laughs> Sarah Louise Gallagher. <laughs> Sarah Ibrahim Garib Daif. Kirsty Gifford. <laughs> David Ian Goodfellow. <laughs> Haifa Mohammed Hadi. <laughs> Graham Eric Hall. Mohammed Riyad Halab. <laughs> Khaled Hamoud Hamhami. <laughs> Grant Hart. <laughs> Syed Hussein Hashem. Rua Adnan Hashim. <laughs> Wissam Hotcher. <laughs> Kane Michael Tiperius Hayward Hughes. <laughs> David Hernandez. Richard Hudson. Claire Jenkins. Avikal Ja. Adam Johnson.
Martin James Johnson. Elvin Joseph. Aditya Joshua Prasanna. Georgia Kalezi. Fiona Keegan. Vicky Bupendra Katcher. <laughs> Yusri Mohammed 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 Ali Khalif. <laughs> Shruti Kaller. <laughs> Evangelis Contonicus. Adnan Mohammed Kalangarakath Mohammed Ashraf. <laughs> Fraser Lauder. <laughs> Michael Lout. <laughs> David Charles Linders. Xuanzi Liu. Christine MacDonald. Lorna MacDonald. Alexander William McGregor. Niall Andrew James McRae. <laughs> Rachel McSween. <laughs> Mariam Ahmed Majed. <laughs> Mukesh Kumar Marish. Ahmed Hamdi Zaki Mansour. <laughs> Brian Richard Maribel. <laughs> Ngobi Jacqueline Martins Yellow. <laughs> Craig John McCauley. Angela Michelle McCabe. <laughs> Kelsey McKechnie. <laughs> Katie McVeigh. <laughs> Shubham Mishra. Emin Mujali. <laughs> Janagaswani Munayandi. <laughs> Mark I. Nath. <laughs> Su Tsong Nye. Nor as Lena Norden. <laughs> Chikadabia Christopher Obi Ofui Dili. <laughs> Guarav Kanak Oza. <laughs> Amita Panasar.
Charalampus Papuzuglo. Vasilius Paraskevopoulos. Eileen Jane Petrie. Sher Hong Poin. Celine Panarsi. Vanessa Andrea Pinky Astudillo. Nada Quad. Astra Quayam. James Andrew Rayburn. Sean Philip Rands. Shashank Rathi. Anthony William Rhodes. <laughs> Noronot Robcop. <laughs> Victoria Roddick. <laughs> Athena Rafogali. Hesham Yusuf Ahmed Mohammed Said. <laughs> Mohammed Salah. <laughs> Daniel Sharkey. <laughs> Tanya Sharma. Ragia Shukla. <laughs> Atu Mani Singh. <laughs> Srithla Srikumar. <laughs> Heman Srikumaran Nair. Sandeep Shukumar. <laughs> Panagiota Stakuraki. <laughs> Alan Stewart. <laughs> Venkata Bala Manikrishna Tadapali. Sarah Taylor. Christopher Andrew Thomas. Constantinus Tomazis. Tumala Sri Sai Krishna. Christopher Okezi Umesi. <laughs> Koshik Venkateserwaran. <laughs> Alexander Leighton Noor Watson. <laughs> Ewan Douglas Wheeler. Hendrik Willem Werenga. <laughs> Leanne Williams. <laughs> Su Jin Yong. <laughs> K 
Connie Lee Shen Yi. Panka Yuda Kuniawan. For the degree of Master of Science in Business and Management, Akhil Agniotri. Harper Sail Singh Armo. Claire Broadhurst. Sammy Cheba. Tushar Chathari Gotam. Aninda D. Michael Christian De Vries. Gokugla Krishnan Elango. Eduardo Lapo Imperator. Tian Cheng Jiang. Jacob Joby. Nimlesh John. Sanaya Joshi. Raj Anant Kalkut. Rohan Nagraj Katgal. Karthik Prabhu Kuduvi Subramanian. Shiva Kumar Kondala. Jengru Lee. Chai Chi Lin. Suhas Shivanand Mahashetti. Abby McKenzie. Aidan Muir. <laughs> Miura Nambier. <laughs> Rahul Nili. <laughs> Naru Jana Binti Maslan. Connor Robert Phoebus. Shiny Rajaduri. Noel Saji. Sathita Satukan. Bala Subramian Selvaraj. <laughs> Yashwin Nithyananda Shetty. <laughs> Swapnil Sirmur. <laughs> Jody Smith. Carolyn Eilig Marie Stalter. (laughs) 
Manikandan Yogaraja. Jang Ji. In financial technology, Dalal Almashani. Mohammed Abdulatim Salman Hubali Al Najjar. Khadija Ali Dabal. Sawad Mansur Radi. In international management, Loy Ali M. Akadem. <laughs> Katerina Antoniadu. <laughs> Loizos Antonio. <laughs> Yashvi Devendra Damania. Ambuj Data <laughs> Melissa Kalarikal <laughs> Govind Nair Krishnan Nair <laughs> Aditya Mahendra Habiba Iskandar Mohammed. <laughs> Mohammed Amirul Azat bin Mohammed Zamri. <laughs> Francesca Pia Bragoni. <laughs> Amy Victoria Rhodes. Saif Mohammed Salim. <laughs> Manjulika Raj Singh. <laughs> Yuhang Wu. <laughs> Yi Yao Yang. Lo Chi Yu. In project management and innovation, Emily Harrow. For the degree of postgraduate diploma in business and management, Ching Yang Chao. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, Rahul Prabhakar. <laughs> Demetrius Sekas. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Business and Management, Amritha Panir Selvam. For the degree of Master of Business Administration, Samanwita Acharya.
Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, but most of all, our graduates, I warmly welcome you once again to this special ceremony and memorable day, a day that marks the culmination of a sustained period of demanding work and dedication for our new graduates. You have graduated in front of your family, your friends, and your peers. So I begin my address by congratulating all together our graduates of 2022. Congratulations. When I was watching the graduates come up, uh, we look on ourselves as a leading international technological university, and to see the range of nationalities that came up, it, it truly is a leading international technological university. Now, in a short while, you'll be invited to join the academic procession when we leave the hall. This is a symbol that you're no longer students, but you're full members of the academic community at the University of Strathclyde, and one that numbers nearly 200,000 people across the world. The University of Strathclyde is an institution where freedom of thought is encouraged and valued. It's an institution exemplified by tolerance and inclusivity, one which seeks to play a significant role in shaping the world in which we live through our teaching, our research, but most of all through our alumni community, that 200,000 people in which you are now part. So now as graduates of Strathclyde, you too must play your part in drawing upon the knowledge you have gained here and the learning that is still to come to build a brighter future. I hope that in the years to come, wherever you are and in whatever circumstances you find yourselves, you will demonstrate Strathclyde's socially progressive values, an ethos of tolerance, pluralism, and a desire to make a positive difference. It's fair to say that the last two and a half years have been particularly challenging due to the coronavirus pandemic and the restrictions. And you have all shown great resilience, adaptability, and determination to arrive at this day. We have among our cohorts our MBA full-time part-time, executive, corporate. We've got people from Bahrain and our masters in fintech. It's the first time that they've graduated. We've got people from China. We have people from India, Dubai, Malaysia, Singapore, Athens, and s some even made it through from Edinburgh. <laughs> it really is an event where we've all come together to celebrate. And it's such a proud moment. I can say that, you know, I've been in education for a long time now, and, and I think that over the pandemic, it was the most challenging period that all of us faced in terms of trying to keep going. As an example, our MBA 25, who graduate, uh, because of the pandemic, they were only able to attend three face-to-face -face modules. The rest of the time, we had to adapt, be resilient, and live in a way in which I suppose the world is going to have to live in the next few years. You all live the maximum that when you're going through hell, just keep going. And I think that's something that is echoed by Benny in his, his speech as well. Now, we've got people, family members that are all from all over the world. And, and I'm sure that our graduates are extremely grateful for their support. So I want us our graduates to take this opportunity to show your appreciation and gratitude with a round of applause for your family, your friend, and your supporters. Thank you very much. A lot of our programs today are what we call faculty programs. So that means that our staff come from all the different departments, our MBA, our MBM, our Masters in Business and Management, and our Masters in International Management. 
a master's in project management and innovation. These are not departmental programs. These are faculty programs. And the staff that you see are from all the different departments that have contributed to these faculty programs. And your success, and our success as a university, is in no small part due to the efforts of these staff, those who are here today and those who can't be here. They deliver our vision of Strathclyde as a socially progressive leading international technological university. I'm certain that all of you have been helped by our wonderful staff. And I don't talk just about the academics. There's the, the staff who work, our program directors, the administrative staff, those who are behind the scenes. All of us came together and all of us are equally celebrating in your success. So can I ask our graduates now to please show your appreciation for those staff uh, for helping you get through this period. Now, of all the key figures in our history, Professor John Anderson was the one who made it possible back in 1796. Benny mentioned Benjamin Franklin in his speech. John Anderson was a friend and colleague of Benjamin Franklin. And in fact, when Benjamin Franklin came over to Scotland and he traveled uh, about Scotland, he met up with John Anderson and it was Benjamin Franklin's inspiration that led John Anderson to think that there has to be a place of useful learning in the west coast of Scotland. And so it was nice to see that Benny had actually mentioned that. And John Anderson made this all possible back in 1796, at the end of the Scottish Enlightenment, when Strathclyde was founded for the benefit of all mankind as a place of useful learning. And that motto, which started way back in 1796, we still have that today, and it is what drives us. We want to be a place of useful learning, and all of our programs are geared towards achieving that. Anderson believed in knowledge for the greater good in education for all, what we call widening participation today. Strathclyde is at the forefront of widening access to higher education. We welcome those with the ability to learn regardless of their personal circumstances. This year, we met the Scottish Government target of bringing in 20% of our new students from the 20% most challenged areas of the country. And we've achieved that while having some of the highest entry requirements in the whole of the UK. You know, we, we, we view all of our population in society as those who can contribute to the world. And, and I think Strathclyde, in the way in which we, we attract students from everywhere, really captures that. We're also a research intensive university whose vision is to make a positive difference to the lives of the students, the society and the world. And through our groundbreaking research, we are helping to change the world for the better. Our scientists and researchers, including our staff in the business school, are leading the development and implementation of innovative technologies that will facilitate the transition from fossil fuels to clean, sustainable energy sources, such as wind, solar, and hydrogen. And these will power our future and tackle climate change. We're developing new drugs using new digital manufacturing processes that will provide cheaper, more effective treatments in the fight against cancer, kidney diseases, and inflammatory diseases. And we're also helping our health services evolve to face the challenges of health and social care in the changing demographics of the 21st century. Through our focus on entrepreneurial education, we're helping students and staff to create new businesses and sustainability in mind. And these, in turn, are creating jobs and supporting economic growth. Strathclyde has Strathclyde Inspire. It's something which is really distinctive and unique about this university. We support and encourage entrepreneurship in all its forms. And graduates, all of you, if you want to explore your entrepreneurial potential, if you have an idea for a business or considering commercialising some aspect of your project or your dissertation, then we will support you at every stage. And please check out the website. Just check out Strathclyde Inspire and there are opportunities for you to engage with us in this new world where jobs are changing at a rate of knots that we never ever thought could be the case. 
If you explore the campus, you will see that the university is leading the revitalization of this part of the city through the Glasgow City Innovation District. This is attracting companies, both large and small, to work with us to create new ideas, technology, and solutions in a range of problems, including health tech, fintech, 5G, industrial informatics, space, and quantum. And much of that is based in our technology and innovation center just down the hill. We spent over one billion pounds in the last 12 years on the campus. And, and I really ask all of you and the families to take a wander through the campus. And for those of you who have maybe been in Glasgow in the 80s or the 70s, you'll just see how much our estate has changed and how much Strathclyde is at the heart of this. But it's, it's not just about the companies. We continually work to enhance our students' experience. We are investing in our campus and we've invested in the new Strathclyde Sport. We've got the Learning and Teaching Building, which all of us will go and join at the end of this ceremony. And you'll see that new building, it was 60 million pounds that we invested, that just opened uh, this year, or last year. We're investing in health and wellbeing services. And we're putting students at the heart of everything that we do. Our progress and efforts in all of these areas have been recognized in recent years with a host of awards. We became the only university to win the Times Higher Education University, UK University of the Year twice. We won it uh, just recently in 2019. We've also been named Business School of the Year, Workplace of the Year, and Research Project of the Year. And also we won the Widening Access Project in 2019 for our work with Breaking Barriers, uh, among other uh, activities. And despite the many challenges that we faced as a university and as a society, Strathclyde Business School has had reason to celebrate. In the last year, we were proud and honored to receive a 50 million pounds donation from one of our alumni, someone who did an MBA, someone who did a PhD at Strathclyde. The alumnus, Charles Huang, uh, set up through his philanthropic uh, foundation the largest gift that Strathclyde has ever received, but also the largest gift that an institution in, the, in Scotland has ever received. 20 million pounds of that went to Strathclyde Business School to set up the Stephen Young Institute for International Business, a global leaders scholarship program, which will go on to our MBA, and a series of entrepreneurship awards where we can fund companies coming through our university and who are engaged with the university. We also have 30 million pounds to support a new sustainable building, which is a key part of the university's technology and innovation zone. We plan to launch the institute uh, just at the beginning of 2023 formally. So please keep an eye out for the news. And if you're interested in getting involved in the institute, then please get in touch. Charles, when he, he, he approached us, uh, when we, we had the ceremony, I asked him, you, you know, Charles, why did you want to give 50 million pounds to the university? It's the largest ever gift that the country has, has received, a you know, an institution in the country has ever received. And he says, David, the reason I want to give it is because of the Strathclyde staff. He said, when I did my MBA and I did my PhD, I went back to Hong Kong and China, and I was starting my career, and I had a number of failures. And during those periods when I had real failure, I always felt that I could go back to the Strathclyde staff to ask them for help, particularly my supervisor. And they got me through those really hard times. And as, you know, and as a result of that, he is now the success that he is today. And Charles uh, owns the company that actually produced the lateral flow tests during the pandemic. So all those lateral flow tests that we had during restrictions, they were Charles' company. And they came from an alumnus of this university. So it's a real great reason for us to be proud. But I want all of us, all of those graduates are out here. This isn't the end. We are here for you. Despite the challenges you might face in the future and the difficulties that you might face wherever you are in the world, know that the Strathclyde staff are here to help you. And keep that in your mind, because we are a Strathclyde family, and we do look on it as that. We call ourselves Strathclyders, and uh, definitely you're all them. Not just you, but also your family. You're also very welcome. 
Stuff like business school has been ranked in the top 95 European business schools. Uh, and that, the reason we, we got that, we're actually ranked 53 uh, overall. Um, it's based on the performance of these faculty programmes that you're all on. It's your programmes that has led to that. The MBA, the Masters in Management, the MBM, and our executive programmes. We were ranked in the Corporate Knights Better World MBA, uh, which, uh, that recognises the integration of sustainability in the programme as well as research and sustainability. We were ranked 17th in the world, our programme in the MBA. And our Masters in International Management graduate, Panayotis Kyriakopoulos, he won the Business and Innovation Award in, of the Study UK Alumni Awards in 2022, which took place in Greece this year. And I, I want to just finish off in terms of one of our successes of our staff, Professor Eleanor Shaw, who's uh, presented Benny Higgins. She was awarded the Order of the British Empire for services to entrepreneurship and education this year. But there are just a few of the highlights to pick from. And, and I really do hope that you all feel as proud of the university achievements as much as we do. But today is your day, and the time has come for you to celebrate with your loved ones, your friends, and your colleagues. It is immense, with immense pride that we see you graduate. And though you may be leaving us, remember your Strathclyders, you're part of our family. And we hope you continue to stay in touch to let us know how you get on and continue to be our ambassador in the workplace and wherever you find yourself in society. So on behalf of the University of Strathclyde, congratulations again to each and every one of you, and I wish you every success in the future. Thank you very much. So I'm looking for a thumbs up. It's a thumbs up. And the November graduations, it regularly rains, so we can't have our uh, academic procession. So now at this stage in the ceremony, just before I close it, uh, we will be having an academic procession. We'll be walking to the teaching and learning building. It's our newest building. We want to invite the graduates to join us in that procession and then the families there afterwards. So if I can ask you all to be upstanding. So if the family and friends who are here, if you can wait until the graduates leave the building and then just join us. I now declare today's congregation for the conferment of degrees closed. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. <laughs>